another election held um, this weekend was in Iran, where you had two candidates. Uh, the one candidate was the candidate of the orthodoxy of the status quo, the candidate of Ayatollah Khamenei, uh, the supreme leader, the candidate of the establishment. Uh, very conservative, uh, very committed to keeping Iran the way it is, very, very hostile to the West, uh, and, and very, very hostile to young women who want to, I don't know, show a little bit of hair, hair, not even skin, talking about hair. Uh, anyway, he was facing what Iranians, what in the press, what the press all over the world is calling a, quote, reformer, um, a, a more moderate uh, uh, candidate, Mr. Peze Shakain, Peze Shakain, uh, who advocated in debates for a, uh, a deal with the West, for um, a, a nuclear deal, and uh, for maybe women can show a little bit of hair in public and not be beaten to death. Maybe that is possible. Uh, and... Um, yeah, uh, uh, so, it, it, you know, uh, uh, somewhat more uh, perceived to be less conservative, less uh, more moderate uh, uh, perspective uh, and, and, and getting, uh, getting support both uh, internationally and within Iran from the more liberal members of, um, of the party. But in the election, it turned out I think to the surprise and the shock of many observers in the West, that the reformer won. And the reformer won, and more than that, the reformer was, quote, allowed to win. And really the reason the reformer was allowed to win was that it doesn't really matter, right? So in Iran, the system of government is such that the president has very little power. Almost all the power lies with the supreme leader. Don't, don't you want to live in a country that has a supreme leader? Not just any leader, a supreme leader, uh, which is Khamenei. Uh, he has all the power. He has all the cards. He pulls all the levers. He could have declared the more conservative candidate the winner. But, you know... It's challenging right now to be Khamenei. He's 85 years old. The Iranian uh, population does not like him. Uh, he is very unpopular. Generally, the Islamic Republic is uh, unliked. Not only do the Iranians oppose the authoritarian nature of the regime, not only do they oppose the, 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 the strict Islamist interpretation of Sharia law, that is imposed on them, but they were also in real economic malaise. Uh, you know, the economy has done poorly. It's done poorly now for years, really decades. The Iranians are fed up. They travel enough. They see enough what's going on around the world that they know there's an alternative. Uh, so Iranians are fed up. They, they, they want change. The candidates presented to run for president, uh, the Supreme Leader, with his counsel, right, can uh, filter out candidates that are unacceptable. The candidates that were deemed acceptable by the regime to run, nobody in Iran really liked, so that turnout was very, very low for both rounds of the election. There's a first round and then two candidates run in a second round. Um, and in the second round, even though it was a conservative versus a so-called reformer, very few people came out, less than 50%, uh, and, and they voted overwhelmingly for the reformer. Uh, so Khamenei is unpopular. He's 85. He's worried about succession. He wants his son to be the next uh, supreme leader. But, but that looks bad because didn't the Iranian regime come about in opposition to a monarchy where the rule passed from father to son? Uh, and yet that's what they're going to do here. Um, so, you know, the Iranian, the, 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 the Iranian uh, presidential election is uh, tricky and difficult, and uh, the reality is that uh, uh, 
the regime has to throw the population a bone. And I think here they threw the population a bone by allowing this so-called moderate to be elected. However, this so-called moderate has no power, one. Two, this so-called moderate is only a so-called moderate. He is not a moderate. And, and, and let, me just, let me just say something about the previous point. It's not only that the Supreme Leader has the power. The reality is that the Islamic Revolutionary Guard, which is basically the military, um, they are the preservers of the regime. They're not exactly the military. They're the, you know, the, the special forces that protect the regime. Um, and they are super conservative. They are not sympathetic to any kind of reforms. So basically, the new president has no power base. Uh, the, the parliament, which is very conservative, is against them. The, the Supreme Leader is against them. The Islamic Revolutionary Guard is against them. Every power center in the Iranian regime is against him. Now, on top of that, he's not really a reformer, right? So, yes, he wants to cut a deal. But everybody wants to cut a deal, right? Uh, he basically wants the sanctions lifted. But one of the first things he did, maybe the first thing he did, was send a message to... Hassan Nasrallah, the head of Hezbollah in Lebanon. And he writes, greetings and, thank and many thanks. I have received your valuable and gracious message following my election as president of the Islamic Republic of Iran. The Islamic Republic of Iran has always supported the resistance of the people in the region against the illegitimate Zionist regime. Supporting the resistance is rooted in the fundamental policies of the Islamic Republic of Iran the ideals of the late Imam Khomeini and the guidance of the Supreme Leader and will continue with strength. I'm confident that the resistance movement in the region will not allow this regime to continue its warmongering, this is the Zionist, warmongering and criminal policies against the oppressed people of Palestine and other nations in the region. I'm grateful for your sincere prayers for me and I ask Almighty God for your increased honor and success and for the happiness and progr progress of the people of Lebanon, da 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 so now, I mean, nothing's going to change. They're not going to withdraw all the Iranian-backed militias. They're not going to suspend support for Hamas and Hezbollah. They're not going to stop sending missiles to the Houthis to, to block trade in the Red Sea. Nothing is going to change. Uh, so, yes, the press is going to have their... He's a moderate. We, the Iranians erected a moderate day, but it's meaningless. It doesn't matter. It doesn't change one iota of what's going on in Iran. And a moderate in Iran is uh, an Islamic fanatic fascist in any other place, in any other location, in any other context. So nothing has changed for the better. And to the extent that electing a, quote, reformer, fools anybody, then that means it's a move for the worse. Um, you know, my sympathies are with the Iranian people who have to tolerate uh, this barbarity, uh, continue to tolerate this barbarity.